as uh, Professor Brown has pointed out, tax expenditures, expenditures tend to disproportionately benefit the very wealthy, allowing those that have access to high-priced tax attorneys to choose if and when they pay taxes. And of course, you have to be making a lot of money to make it worth your while to spend money on tax savings. Um, in that regard, Ms. Brown, I wonder if you could offer a brief comment on the extent to which opportunity zones run counter to that tax spending problem of being big, lasting, and regressive, or whether they masqueraded uh, yet another tax giveaway to wealthy investors. So I think opportunity zones do get, make a giveaway to wealthy white investors <clears throat> under the guise of helping uh, distressed communities. And I think you can find an anecdote or two will say, well, it worked here, but there are other anecdotes that show um, wealthy uh, investors have influenced which areas were even named as opportunity zones and not necessarily with distressed communities the way the statute the way the statute perhaps should have been written if they were actually interested in holding people's feet to the fire so i i think there's a lot of leeway in opportunity zones that make it not as helpful to distressed communities thank you so again back to tax spending it's big it's lasting it's regressive opportunity zones probably didn't help and some of it is foreign Ms. Rao, you support small businesses. The Ugland House is a small five-story building in the Cayman Islands that is home to well over 18,000 corporate, quote, headquarters. Um, and nearly half of them were determined by the GAO to have U.S. billing addresses. So when you're talking about small business, you've got 9,000 of them in one little building. That's not exactly, Ms. Rao, what you have in mind when you're thinking of helping small businesses get started, is it? No, thank you so much, Senator. So um, while I know that that exists, actually the founders that I work with in early stage, especially primarily BIPOC founders, um, are not necessarily those who have access to capital. And certainly, as you pointed out, it takes a lot of money to pay those high priced lawyers. Actually, the capital that's used in by these BIPOC founders is used in this talent acquisition race. So a lot of issues that um, founders have in their development of their venture is this idea that um, they can't access great talent. And so they are utilizing the capital that they receive to be able to work on their business and to actually scale um, and grow and to be able to create that differentiation mode. So last question, what income demographic do you think it is that is taking advantage of Ugland House and other offshore refuges to avoid paying taxes? Uh, I would surmise that it would likely be those, as Professor Brown suggests, that are already benefiting from uh, the tax codes as they're written. Stands to reason. I yield back my time. Thank you very much.